Get You Some Radio. Yum, yum, come get you some. Welcome back to the Get You Some Radio Show. Today's guest, damn handsome man, Keith Shetterly. Keith, how you doing, brother? Welcome aboard. I'm, do, I'm doing great, brother. It is, it is a, you know, I'm moving. I think I might have mentioned that. That's why it's a little bare behind me. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, changing offices. But other than that, it's it's a great week. Well, good, good. It's, it, it's, it's a beautiful day in Nashville. 78 degrees outside. I've been for my walk. I've been for my run. Every, every, everything is beautiful. Hey, before I forget, I want to remind everyone, if you want to subscribe to the Get Your Some Radio Show, all you do is text Terry to 33 33- Seven seven seven. Text Terry to three three seven seven seven. And you might need to do that. Absolutely. Thank you. Keith is my brother from another mother. We he's 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 a he's a good old Tennessee boy by way of Texas. Uh, he and he and I have been to the the meet and threes here in Nashville and eat some, uh, some some green eyed peas and some turnip greens. And uh, he's <laughs> down home. And the thing I love about Keith, the thing about I love you, brother, is you tell it like it is. You are the bull cutter. Yes, sir. Tell, tell me what that means, what that entails, and what you've been doing. What What is the bull cutter? Well, I, I named it, uh, I trademarked the name, actually. Uh, and the, the whole point of that business for me was to cut the bull. I saw so many dealers, so many, and they're in business, and they're trying to advertise in this new medium, digital everything, and they have abandoned all traditional, or they're thinking whether they want to do direct mail or not, and how does that all work now? And so many people came through their offices and really just blew by them. They had no idea. So they bought a bunch of stuff. They didn't buy a bunch of bull they didn't need to buy. And then they're trying to figure out what's affected. And so I hire out as uh, the bull cutter, bullcutter.com. And I just help them sort that out. And that was, that's been a business for me. It's difficult sometimes because dealers get so much thrown at them and they, they're in that 12, 30 day sprints, you know, trying to make sure everything happens, and especially nowadays it's difficult. So I started out by trying to cut expenses for a dealer. And then I became, okay, not just expenses and taking a look at what you're spending on your digital, what your SEM budget was, what your SEO, what is a good result, what's a bad result. And they get thrown things like, uh, I mean, I'm sure you've heard it, Terry, where they get thrown things like uh, attribution or they, they don't know anything about it. I, I work with a dealer this week who still does not know and depends on me to help him know because I can take all that baloney and boil it down and say, yeah, that works. That doesn't work. Maybe this works because you don't know everything, right? But I'm not going to take any bull. I'm not going to listen to vendors who want to blow past me with, you know, everything because clicks don't buy cars. People do. hundred percent. A lot of people use it now, but I coined it because it yep. was, it's very important to me. And that, that, it makes it clear to a dealer, wait a minute, I'm paying for all these clicks to the website and nobody's coming to my dealership. Exactly. That's a problem. Yeah, and, and uh, I mean, shiny, shiny, uh, shiny things sell good. Everybody's looking for magic beans. I was having a conversation actually just this week, not even about the car business, but the restaurant business with all the coronavirus oh, yeah. thing going on. So all the restaurants are now, they're leaning into the DoorDash and Uber Eats and all that. And uh, they, they jumped on real quick. So they could get the message out, and then they started getting the bills, and they're looking at this, and 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 Uber Eats and Diner, uh, DoorDash and Diners, and whatever they're all called, they're taking thirty percent off the top, and uh, this, I, and I tell them this is exactly what happened in the car business seven <laughs> eight years ago. Yeah, the, all the all these companies they're stealing our watches and charging us to tell us what time it is. They were looking for you when they I found you. I and, love that. They, they, they were looking for you when they found you and you're paying somebody else to get in the middle. I mean, it's a, it, was, it was a good business. It's a good business for all these land grabbers that, that jumped in and grabbed that. Absolutely. It's, it's a very similar situation. That's a great analogy. Uh, the, the dealerships just don't know. And some of them, it gets too confusing and some of them are scared to know, right? We sold enough cars. I've told people that the thing that puts people out of business in this business is that word enough. You know, I'm a salesperson, made enough to pay my rent, so I kind of get lazy. I've, I've sold enough cars to keep my job. We don't need to be thinking like that. There's never enough in this business. And if you think there is enough, then you're probably going to get beat by somebody who doesn't believe that. <laughs> so so what, what is it that's so appealing? Why, did, why do we forget? Why do we forget that it's a people business and that if we just connect with the people, the rest of it will take care of itself? And we're, we're, we're looking for this magic box. What is it that's so appealing that people are looking for? 
Well, it, you know, fear, we can see it nowadays, right? People are afraid and, and fear is a motivator. It makes people cautious. It makes people not trust their gut, not trust the knowledge that they have. You know, if I walked in and tried to sell somebody newspaper advertising the way that they sell digital nowadays, they'd throw me out of the office, right? But they're afraid of a new thing. It's still new to them. Or they're, they've been taught that BDC and the internet and all that needs to work exactly this way. And they go, wow, that's great. It's all working. It's a fine oil machine going nowhere. I haven't sold a single car more. You know, and so they, they forget that all those leads at the bottom of a real lead is a human being. Yeah. And so, you know, there are people who are lead providers and, and click vendors, I call them. I got you clicks. I can do a sales matchback. whoop de doo yeah. Did I see a lift? Yeah. Now, did any people, more people come by my car? Or did you just charge me for getting a piece of the pie I was already going to get? Are you yeah, Brandon you Cattle, as we say in Texas? Are you Brandon Cattle that I already own? <laughs> Brandon Cattle that already that's all awesome. can you imagine back in the day I sold a lot of newspaper ads back in the day can you imagine if the Dallas Morning News did a matchback program we're going to charge you based on the matchback of people who, who who may or may not have seen your ad in the Dallas Morning News well and that, absolutely and then um, I call it a math back I can have faith in a matchback I can as long as I see a, a, a definable lift and I can understand that the traffic is high quality on, on a website for example that they visit they interact, they do more than hit and bounce. And they have a hit bounce story, which I hate, right? Yeah. They land them on the VDP. And then they did, they, they liked the car, they didn't. Right, and next time you go to Walmart, if you don't pick up two or three other items, that'll be a surprise, right? Everybody shops, the psychology is, what deal is available? Is this the best deal? Nobody, nobody laser shops like that, not, and certainly not a car shop. That is just not true. It, and people go, oh, I know, I know a guy who did it. Well, you know, I know a guy who bought a bridge one day, right? Yeah. That one time. <laughs> <laughs> that one time, back in Bay again, right? So that's the problem. We know, we know the problem, and there's, and there's lots of vendors take it to, you know, sliding in to get their piece of the pie. They want to slice. That's the problem. What's the solution? Well, the solution is to get a hold of your business, right? You, you, there are several complicated ways and, and multifaceted and, multi-channel approaches and those are all great and they can be really effective but if you are if you don't know how to look a vendor in the eye and say you know what nothing that you just said to me makes any sense because i didn't sell any more cars there's a there's several listing services i won't mention them because i my lawyer already drives a better car than i do so so the idea is though well we listed your car and look at all this stuff and everything and i didn't get a single car more there's so many vendors that don't know how to express the value that they do have, right? They'd actually give a value, but they, they sound like, I've sat in a dealership with a general manager, and I said, watch this. They're going to come in, and they're going to say a couple things, and the next guy's going to come in and going to say exactly the same thing. And he said, my God, I, I, I felt that way before, but we've had three vendors in who just said exactly the same thing. I said, you know what? The guy in the middle had value because they've learned how to communicate and they learn how to fish with one particular rod and one particular bait and you're still good for it. You got to get better than that. And the way that you do that is you ask simple questions. I needed to sell more cars in the last three months I've had you. I have it. It's not anybody else's fault, but the two people in the room, mine for my sales staff, maybe and you for the advertising, either we figure out what was wrong and we address it or I find somebody else who's going to work with me. That's the first thing. Don't be afraid to scare them. And don't scare them into, I'm going to get a discount. I paid 2000 instead of 4000 Guess what? Vendor took home 3500 bucks or $2,500 or $1,500 and still didn't change anything. Make them accountable. Make them look in the eye. And they go, well, how do you do that? Okay, let me ask you. Terry, you, you've sold, you sold newspaper. If I said, what's your circulation? You would have been able to tell me, right? Right. Okay. If I ask you uh, on your editorial page, how how does uh, you know how does that play with people? Where how do you how do you what's your demographics? You'd be able to tell me, right? Hundred percent. Okay. And so if I was going to go, okay, do I want to be in the Sunday insert? And how do liner ads work? You'd be able to tell me that, right? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Okay. So when you're talking to a digital vendor, you say, okay, you're going to sell me search engine optimization, and you need ninety days to do that. Since you can't tell me who those people are because they're all digital clicks, show me somebody that you're helping today. Okay, then show me three. 
show me four. Give me references. And stop thinking, oh, it's co-opable. It must be okay. <laughs> co-op's, co-op's the crack pipe of this business. I mean, okay. put the crack pipe down, folks. There are plenty of co-op vendors that can help you, but because it's co-opable, I got news. The guy who approved it for co-op at the OEM didn't know what it was. Yeah. The dealer that bought it didn't know what it was. And the vendor in the middle, too often, is very happy that neither one of them knew what it was. Well, if, if it's co-opable, it wasn't designed to help you. <laughs> it was designed <laughs> well, to help somebody else. I, it, it's funny. There are vendors, though, that can provide a service that you want that is co-opable, but they don't give you any guidance. And so just the co-op is not a seal of approval, folks. An intermediary, like some of the OEMs have an intermediate company who says, this is what you must use. Yeah. Okay. Right. So if you were a Detroit dealership and the, and you could get co-op for a Cincinnati ad back in the newspaper days, how much sense would that have made? Yeah. None. It doesn't happen in digital any differently. Don't buy it just because it's co-op. Ask them for some references. Don't get it off your desk. Get the salesperson in the door. We work too much to get things off our desk in this business. I don't want to worry about it. It's taken care of. It's not. You're getting taken to what's been taken, not taken care of. You're getting taken to the cleaners, my friend. We're, 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 uh, we're putting out fires instead of planting trees, baby. That's what we're doing. <laughs> well, that's been the story of business for a long, long time, but it's not as hard as they think. Yeah. And ask them for a reference. Ask them to talk to two or three dealers that they're already helping. Show somebody who has a lift. There's a friend of mine who does SEO. I can't name his company either because I don't want to sound like I'm picking, cherry picking. But he does a great job. He can show you two years of effort that he did on a dealership group and the lift that happened during the time he was there. Does he take credit for all of that? No. But he's smart enough to know that I need to have a story that's true. And he does. Somebody else comes in and says, I'm cooperable. Therefore, you need to sign here. What? I mean, it's not your money anyway. I'm going to work with another dealer that's not going to do that. And we're going to kick your ass. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> You were, ta- you were talking about the people who've learned to fish with one pole. The thing right. I learned right off the bat in, 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 the, in the advertising and marketing business is, 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 is to fish where the fish are, to fish where they're That's hiding. Right. And uh, yeah. I, 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 stood, I, I spoke at NADA one time four or five years ago. I don't even remember when it was. And I stood up and I told everyone that social media, of all the new digital media, social media is the one that functions the most like traditional media. Because yeah. it's got an audience, you can tell how many there are, you can tell who they are, you can tell when they are. There are people behind the numbers. There are people, yeah. there are actual people there. There's an actual audience. Tell me what you're doing with uh, social media and with Facebook now and how that converts to people buying cars instead of generating licks. I, 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 absolutely. Just a second to Bull Cutter. So in Bull Cutter, I realized that a lot of dealers could get my diagnosis. It's like being the doctor that diagnoses somebody. Would you rather be the diagnostic doctor or would you rather have the cure? The cure for every dealership in America is showroom traffic. If you guys are never going to sell better than they do today or than they did yesterday, if you're, you know, you're going to spend training or not, you know basically what they're going to be able to do. So what's your answer? More showroom traffic. And, and although that doesn't fit everybody, Mindset, it actually works pretty well. What's showroom traffic made of? It's not made of clicks. It's not made of maybes. It's not a, it's not a, a hologram. It's a real person sitting across from the salesperson who says, thanks for coming to Smith Motors today, man. I really appreciate your time. We're going to make it as easy as possible on you. What would you like to achieve today? Boom. We love having you here. And then we talk about all that stuff. That's how your salespeople to sell across the desk. Well, i got to get them in that chair. Clicks don't get them in that chair, folks. They just don't. They just don't. It's like it, it, billboards don't get people in chairs. They just remind you, oh, yeah, there's a dealership there. Great. So what I do now, what I realized was that there were, for me, it was a better business model. So on clicks and Google search and that kind of thing, I still perform the bull cutter function. But if you want to talk to somebody about acquiring people for your dealership, then you fish where the fish are. And that's on social media. That's not having a page or somebody monitoring it or all the, or putting up cat videos, folks. Those days are done. That story is done. If someone's trying to tell you that story now, forget it. So there are all kinds of maintenance things to be done. You pay for somebody to make sure the bulbs are working your sign too, okay? You don't pin your business to that. So when you pin your business to is people. So Facebook uh, advertising is a little bit of a different beast. It's not it's a lot like traditional, like you're saying. It has some 
Facebook restrictions because it's their platform and they own it and they need to tell us how to advertise on it. That's their belief system and how they operate. And you can have great success working within, within their deal. And so what I, I built with my partner was uh, turnuptosales.com, turnuptosales.com. We focused on um, Facebook items that, Facebook advertising that would generate leads. And then we started working on events, Facebook events. Well, how does an event happen on Facebook? It doesn't. It's announced and the appointments are set with real people by a BDC full of real people in this country who know how to talk on the keyboard with people and get them into your dealership. And that's a people provider. We don't okay, have to right there because that's an interesting thing. So it's people who speak English and type in English. Let me ask you this. What percentage of them are carrying on an audio conversation and what percentage of it uh, is, is happening uh, by text or by, by messenger or, or something that's done on a well, click? For, for, these events, for these events, it's 100% on the keyboard. Right. 100%. 100%. And, I, and I'll tell you why that works. Because that's where we touch them. People look at their phone at an average of eight times an hour. Okay, if you're awake 16 hours, that's 64 times you looked at your phone. How many songs did you listen to on the radio? How, how, how many movies did you watch every day? You do this every day. Yeah. So we talk to you where you are in a way that you can on your phone. You know, it's the power of the thumb or fingers if you use both, whatever. <laughs> it's in the hand. I'm your future old, is in the hand of your customer. And to grab a phrase from a very famous book and modify it, uh, many thanks to the author, wherever two or more of my customers are gathered, so should I be there also. And so I'm in their hand. I'm talking to them right there. So why do I want to interrupt their day with a phone call when they can just do whatever they're doing like everybody else does? I'm using my phone on this call for Me this because I'm moving. But if I wasn't, I have my phone right in front of me and I can have a whole conversation. And I can lock in an appointment, tell people what I want, and it gives them faith. They've talked to a human being in their way, in their context, on their time, at their convenience. Wow, that's very powerful, very powerful. There's a big power in the phone. There's a whole separate place for that. But on these events, it's completely by messenger. Completely by messenger. So you're messenger with messaging during them. You're setting the appointments, and you're bringing in the people because the people buy yes. the cars. I'm sorry, the, the audio messed up a little bit there, Terry, I think. So you're, you're, you're texting them back and forth. You're, you're connecting with them on Messenger. You're setting up the appointments. You're making sure they show up, and you're making sure a butt ends up in a seat in the showroom for a person to talk to another person because people buy cars. Absolutely. And, and along the way, we ask people, hey, did you make your appointment? Oh, you did? Oh, and they treated you badly? What happened? I go right to the to the manager at the store, GSM, or maybe sometimes a GM. I just did this for a, a couple of weeks ago. It happened this very thing. And the guy was trying to buy two cars, one for him and one for his fiance. Well, he bought the cars because the general manager stepped in because he knew the situation happened, and he was able to rectify that. And, and the GM got with me. He's like, man, I, I don't know. I, do you do this for everybody? I said, yes, we do. Because it's not just – spray and pray or I'm looking for a volume. I call us a little bit of a boutique. Turn up the sales is we're not trying to have a thousand dealers. Like if I have that, I'll be happy, but I'll make sure every thousand of them, every one of them gets the level of service they need. I'm not going to move from that. I'm not going to sway from that. I'm not going to be swayed by that. I make plenty of money doing this and, and other things that I've done in my life. I don't need to sell myself out. I won't. So that's a level of service too. It's not just butts and seats, which is really important. It's if they show up, and they were treated wrong, you'll find out. But also, if they show up and your sales staff is not handling the process right, you get a chance to make a correction. That's very valuable information. And it was valuable in this case because they sold two cars from a simple messenger conversation. I took that over. I personally did that. My BDC got a hold of me, and I personally talked to the person. So, you know, when stuff like that happens, I'm able to do that at the level of service that we do. So, I mean, that, and, and this, this is what I've been talking about and preaching for, for four or five years now. Oh, yeah. It's a oh, yeah. business. I want, I, I want to forget about the leads. Leads don't buy cars. Clicks don't buy cars. Uh, I tell everybody, it's like, a, it's like the old movie, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. We're talking about the leads of the clicks and how much did the click cost and how much, who's got the best leads. And the leads are weak. And, 
And, and, and we just forget that at the end of the day, it boils down to a person sitting across from a person looking each other in the eyeball and whether they trust you enough to write that big check. That's right. You know where the up bus is nowadays? The up bus is in your customer's hand. Right. And it's bringing them to your dealership, talking with them on a level that they understand with the commitment that you give and under the advertising. And it's also, we uh, named the BDC Impulse, M M Pulse. Um, we do, uh, under the turn of sales, we do move metal events. Move, moving metal is very important, right? So the M comes from that, but it's an impulse. Right there in my hand, I don't have time and I won't take time as the average consumer to go, oh, look, I need to read a whole story. Okay, never mind. Yeah. But I will react to an ad, I will react to a picture that attracts me, and I will make an impulse to get a hold of somebody. And if I can answer that impulse, our average, average time, Facebook doesn't measure under two minutes. Every event we do, we average under two minutes. Whatever it is under two minutes, I can't tell you because Facebook doesn't measure, but I can tell you we talk to people. And the best part about it, people go, oh, they got to be 2 a.m. How do they do that? No. You and I spoke about this. The advertising is running. The BDC is running. The person clicks. The BDC answers. In Facebook, the advertising goes off. Yeah. BDC will quiet down. Although we keep a person looking at it just to make sure that if something happens or somebody gets back, we try and answer. I answer stuff, you know, I'm up and I'm not doing anything. I take a look. I go, oh, look, it's midnight. But look, what was I doing? Why not? So I mean, actually, I, I, have a, I have a buddy sold a car. We had actually he was on the Get Your Summer Radio Show a couple of weeks ago. He was sitting at home, nine thirty at night, gets a yeah. message. Someone say, says to him, "Hey, can we set up a car?" You know, that's nine thirty. By nine o'clock the next night, he was delivering the car. Never, never met the person. Did everything on the phone. So they're they're there. You know where they are, when they are, uh, and you you run the ads to make the to 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 pump up the volume when you need the volume pump. That's right, and and. And we can also do it when we're most likely, right? You want to go fish where the fish are when they're there, right? That's right, when they're hungry. <laughs> yeah, so you, you learn in Facebook when to advertise is just as important. I mean, days and, and a schedule, not just some random. I think I'll just do that for a couple hours a night. That's not how we work. We are, it's an iterative process. The consumer changes during, during the virus time. Consumers' behavior has changed because they've been home a lot more. So daytime advertising during the week, which was not working very well before because everybody was at work, everybody still has a job or get paid is still at work. Yes, I understand, but they have days off or they're working from home. And guess what they're doing? Eight times an hour. So boom, we get a chance to talk to people when we wouldn't normally. And guess what? That's very successful. Very successful. Keith, I, I have everyone on the Get You Some Radio Show. I, I make one guarantee. That people are going to spend uh, half an hour, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever it is, listening to me run my mouth with my buddies. They're going to walk away with something, one step they can do to improve their lives. The, the sum in Get You Some Radio is create health, happiness, and prosperity. So okay. what one thing dealers and salespeople can do today, as soon as they put down their phone, before they pick it up again one of the eight times, what's one thing they can do today to start creating health, happiness, and prosperity, to start talking more to people instead of, instead of, uh, instead of analyzing numbers in a spreadsheet? Well, that's right. And that's, that's a, that at a broad point is exactly it. Start remembering that you're, remember, don't start, just remember that your business is a people business. It's not just people across your desk. It's how do I connect with them? And they can go, to your own Facebook page. Don't be, if you're a salesperson, don't be afraid to take a step of your own prosperity like you're talking about and put up that you work in a dealership. Don't be ashamed or afraid. And they say, oh, I don't want the heat cases. Trust me, the successful people in this business that are using social media individually go out there and they, 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 they carpe Facebook, right? Seize, seize social media, carpe social, seize it, man. Don't, don't hesitate. If that's your living, and you're in sales, you can't be afraid of the heat. you got to go after the gold. Gold gets formed by heat, folks. If you don't know that, all the pretty watches and stuff, that's how that works. So don't be afraid to get the heat from selling something, too. And for managers and general managers, you know, you can enable your salespeople. I want you to take that thought. But the step I would tell you to take is to get on your Facebook. You, you need to have a person who understands it. Work that Facebook. Go ahead and... Allow people to set their own appointments, put appointments on there, encourage them, spend some advertising money on deal of the day. 
If you don't do deal of the day on Facebook, you are out of your mind. You've got, a, you've got 7,000 people that like your page and you go, oh, you know, I don't know what to do with them. Go get them. Go talk to them. You got an open radio show just like you have here, only you're talking to every person that, that likes your page in theory. Possible that you're going to be able to sell a car with a deal of the day. Why not? People go, oh, I got I, I don't vend out your blood. This is your blood. Sales are your blood, and it's in your blood, brother. And take that and get after your Facebook. Let them set, set it up the page. And if you don't know how, I can tell you for free. Well, Keith at bullcutter.com, if that's not if that's okay to say that, Terry. Yeah. They're, yeah, okay, well, they're welcome to get a hold of me. I'll teach you how to do that part, and you can seize it and go out there and see social media today without spending really a dime extra with me or anyone else. And if you're going to be talking to advertisers, find out what they do in social media. And don't tell them it's Facebook Marketplace, and don't let them tell you that either. I'm telling you, it's not that. It's having a page and interacting with people and setting appointments, brother. And it's you can do that as a salesperson. You can do that as a general manager. With, I'm sure you don't want to delegate that, but you can still do it for your store, and you can do it as an individual person. And just treat 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 everybody like 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 people. Just and yeah. you know, well, is that is that an okay answer with you? I think that's fine. I, th I think that actually that's a big thing. So I think somewhere along the way we forgot that it was was a people business, and we we started staring at when everything went on the computer. We started looking at everything like it's a computer screen, like it's a spreadsheet, and it's hard to remember. Sometimes it's easy to forget that there's people on the other end of it. And what, what's happening on the computer screen isn't near as important as what's happening with the person on the other end of it. Well, let me give a little bit to you. All of us can contact on the keyboard. We lose all this feedback. You send me videos. You reminded me that even when I'm talking to my own customers and my own friends, that a video is okay. You know, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever, just to say hello, good morning, Keith, hope you're having a great day. What an impression that made. It made me want to work with you even more. And I met you already. Yeah. So you know, you're a fantastic individual and you have a great tool set for, for people. And you really set the stage. Go make a video. That's another thing you can do. Don't be afraid to go in there and say, hey, I've got a car. Call me. You know, it doesn't have, it doesn't have to be complicated or perfect. You're not making a universal movie. You're not Tom Cruise, man. Eyeball to eyeball, belly to belly, baby. Just like in the old days. <laughs> hey, listen, we're gonna, I got to run. I appreciate you, Keith. Love you to death. Uh, Next time you're in Tennessee, uh, you know, ribs on me. It'll be this year. It'll All be right. This year. I hope, hope to see you soon, brother. Y'all take okay, care. Everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Get you some radio. <laughs> You've been listening to the Get You Some Radio Show. Subscribe today at terrylancaster.tv to hear more episodes, win valuable cash and prizes, and get free training to help you create an army of buyers who know, like, and trust you before they've ever even met you. It's a big, wide world, boys and girls. Get out there and get you some.